evening and welcome to Yahweh's Learning Channel. My name is Brother Charles Williams. This evening we're going to continue the series that we're doing on the 12 tribes of Israel. And we saw last week the 12 tribes of Israel were Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Issachar, Zebulun, Joseph, and Benjamin. By the end of this series, we're going to know those by heart, in order. Uh, please remember that the uh, tribal symbols in the presentation are based on tradition and must reflect Jacob's blessing in Genesis chapter 49. Bible scholars differ about the dates, meanings and of the names and specific tribe locations. We try to ensure that the material presented here is consistent with widely held interpretations among Bible scholars. Let's jump right into this. The first uh, one is Reuben. James chapter 1 verses 5 and 6. You must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Okay, so we see that is in the New Testament, uh, James, uh, the book of James. Now, Reuben. Who was Reuben? Okay, in the family, he was the first son of Jacob. He was born to Leah. And we saw that last week when we looked at the, uh, the, the genealogies of the uh, tribes. Okay, what's the meaning of the name? It means see, a son. Genesis chapter 29, verses 31 through 32. When Yahweh saw that Leah was not loved, he enabled her to conceive. But Rachel remained childless. Leah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Reuben, for she said, It is because Yahweh has seen my misery. Surely my husband will love me now. Okay, you'll notice in all, uh, throughout the whole scriptures, all, all of it, that usually a name means something. Um, and especially with the tribes of Israel. Reuben means see a son. And normally if it means, it has a meaning, there's, there has a scripture behind that meaning, more explaining why Yahweh had given uh, that meaning to that name of that person. And we see here why Reuben was given the name uh, Reuben, and it means see a son. Okay? Reuben and his brothers. Reuben intervened on behalf of Joseph to save him from being killed by his brothers. Nevertheless, when Reuben returned, he discovered that his brothers had sold Joseph to uh, slave traders. And you can read that in Genesis chapter 37. Now, that story there, he, uh, he, he was the only one who stood up for Joseph against his brothers. Jacob's blessing. Jacob called his firstborn, my might, the first sign of my strength, excelling in honor, excelling in power. But Reuben had relations with Bela, Rachel's handmaiden. Genesis chapter 35, verse 22. And it came to pass, when Israel dwelt in that land, that Reuben went and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine, and Israel heard it. Now the sons of Jacob were twelve. Okay. Now, also, Genesis chapter 49, verses 3 and 4. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel, because thou wentest up to thy father's bed. Then defilest thou it. He went up to my couch. Okay, so we see what uh, Jacob's blessing was. He actually had a uh, relationship with his father's concubine, Bila. Okay, then there's certain symbols. Now, of course, remember that these might not be accurate, but they're as close as we know. Uh, the symbols for Reuben are water and a mandrake plant. Now, why would it be a mandrake plant? 
Well, let's look at Genesis chapter 30, verses 14 through 16. And Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest, and found mandrakes in the field, and brought them unto his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandrakes. And she said unto her, Is it a small thing that thou hast taken my husband? And wouldest thou take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, Therefore he shall lie with thee tonight for thy son's mandrakes. And Jacob came out of the field in the evening, and Leah went out to meet him, and said, Thou must come in unto me, for surely I have hired thee with my son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. Huh, that's interesting. He had relations with her for her, the, the mandrakes. Now that's a story in all, all in itself, and we're not going to get into all that right now. Okay, the census. The first census of Reuben, the count of the tribe of Reuben was 46,500. The second census was 43,730. The first census was taken at uh, Sinai after the tribes had left Egypt. Numbers, you can see that in Numbers chapter 1 through 3. The second census was taken in Moab before the tribes entered the Promised Land. You can see that in Numbers chapter 26. About 40 years separated the census, the two census. So we see, and that's interesting between, that means between Numbers chapter 3 and Numbers chapter 26, there was 40 years that had went by. What was Moses' blessing for Reuben? Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 6. Let Reuben live and not die, and let not his men be few. Okay, so Moses blessed the tribes before his death, just before Joshua led the tribes into the promised land in Deuteronomy chapter 33. And this was the blessing that Moses had for Reuben, the tribe of Reuben. Let Reuben live and not die, nor his people be few. Yeah, Moses was praying to Yahweh that uh, Reuben's tribe would multiply and be great in the earth. Now we're going to see each tribe like that. Now we look at here at the, the camp at the tabernacle. Uh, this is the, the way it was set out. Uh, Reuben, this is the tribe of Reuben down in the bottom right. The arrow is going to fly over to it. Okay, the tribe of Reuben was 46,500. And they were to the south and east of the, uh, the tabernacle. Towards the front of the tabernacle, actually on the south side. So the, and he was on the side of where the Levite family of uh, Kohath was at. He was right behind them. Now this right here, Reuben, this is the breastplate of the high priest. The stone that represents uh, Reuben, the tribe of Reuben, was the turquoise, or it's also called the emerald. Uh, the color was a greenish blue type color. And where is that on the, temp the breastplate? It is right here, the second row, third one over. And you can see a picture down on the bottom right there of the, what turquoise rock looks like, or turquoise stone. It's kind of like, yeah, it is kind of like, a, almost like a greenish, more greenish than blue, but looks a lot greenish. Okay. Now, the promised land. They settled outside the promised land east of the Jordan River, in a rich, pasteurized land, suitable for their large herds and their flocks. Numbers chapter 32, verse 1. Now the children of Reuben and the children of Gad had very great multitude of cattle. And when they saw the land of Gezer and the land of Gil Gilead, that behold, the place was a place for cattle. Okay, so we see they had a great a place where there was a lot of pasture land. It included Mount ne ne Nebo, from which Moses viewed the Promised Land. And it's interesting, Reuben, the firstborn, had a mountain, Mount Nebo, that 
And Moses was the one he, where he viewed the promised land. Where is this tribe at? The arrow will point to the bottom right, right above where it says Moab. Uh, he was nor uh, north of Ru uh, Moab, uh, west of Ammon. Okay, so we see on the map uh, where he was. He had did a part on the far right there. More on the promised land. The tribe kept their word by helping the other tribes conquer the promised land. Though, they themselves settled outside that land. Numbers chapter 32, you can read that in Numbers 32, and you can also read it in Joshua chapter 1, verses 12 through 18. And to the Reubenites, and to the Ganites, and to the half the tribe of Manasseh, spake Joshua, saying, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of Yahweh, commanded you, saying, Yahweh your Elohim hath given you rest, and hath given you this land. Your wives and your little ones and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side of Jordan. But you shall pass before your brethren armed, all the mighty men of valor, and help them. Until Yahweh hath given your brethren rest, as he has given you. And they also have possessed the land which Yahweh your Elohim giveth them. Then ye shall return unto the land of your possession, and enjoy it, which Moses, Yahweh's servant, gave you on this side Jordan toward the sun rising. And they answered Joshua, saying, All that thou commandest us will we do, and wheresoever, wheresoever thou sendest us, we will go. According as we hearken unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto thee. Only Yahweh thy Elohim be with thee as he was with Moses. Whosoever he be that doth rebel against thy commandment, and will not hearken unto thy words, and all thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong and of a good courage. So we see, see that how they, they helped the other tribes conquer the promised land. But they themselves were outside that land. Yet there were other times they seemed indecisive. And they failed to assist in the battle. Judges chapter 5, verses 15 through 17. And the princes of Issachar were with Deborah, even es Issachar and also Barak. He was sent on foot into the valley. For the divisions of Reuben, there were great thoughts of heart. Why abodest thou among the sheepfolds to hear the bleeding of the flocks? For the divisions of Reuben, there were great searchings of heart. Here they had a boat beyond Jordan, and why did they remain in their ships? Asher continued on the seashore and abode in his breaches. Okay, so we see how uh, they were indecisive, and they didn't always help the other tribes. Let's look at the next one, the second one, which is Simeon. Romans chapter 12, verses 19 through 21. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith Yahweh. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Okay, we see that in Romans 12, 19 through 21. Don't overcome evil. Don't let evil overcome you. Overcome evil with good. What about Simeon? Let's learn a little bit about Simeon. He was the second son of Jacob. He was born to Leah. The meaning of the, his name is hearing. Yahweh has heard. Okay. Genesis chapter 29, verse 33. And she conceived again and bare a son, and said, Because Yahweh hath heard that I was hated, he hath therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. So we see why he was called Simeon. Because Yahweh heard her petitions for another child. Simeon and Levi. Along with his brother Levi, Simeon attacked the people of the city of Shechem to avenge the assault on his sister Dinah. Genesis chapter 34, verse 24 through 31. And unto Hamor, and unto Shechem his son, 
hearken all that went out of the gate of his city, and every male was circumcised, all that went out of the gate of his city. And it came to pass on the third day, when they were sore, that two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brothers, took each man his sword, and came upon the city boldly, and slew all the males. And they slew Hamor and Shechem his son with the edge of the sword, and took Dinah out of Shechem's house, and went out. The sons of Jacob came upon the slain, and spoiled the city, because they had defiled their sister. They took their sheep, their oxen, and their asses, and that which was in the city, and that which was in the field. And all their wealth, and all their little ones, and their wives took they captive, and spoiled even all that was in the house. And Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, Ye have troubled me to make me stink among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites. And I, being few in number, they shall gather themselves together against me and slay me. And I shall be destroyed, I and my house. And they said, Simeon and Levi, should he deal with our sister as with a harlot? Okay, so we see right here the problem with this story. Simeon and Levi thought that they were doing righteously by their sister Dinah, by revenging her with the king and his son of Shechem, by killing them and all the men, the story says all the men of the, that city. And they took all the spoils of that city. And of course, Jacob was not happy with this, and you can you know, go back and read this even further and deeper at a later time. But Jacob wasn't happy with this. Jacob uh, was not happy at all. He thought that the other people around them were going to come together and attack them and kill them all. So they, what they did was they up and moved. They packed up and they moved on. Because they didn't want the other kings around to kill them. Okay, so let's look at Simeon and Joseph. Jacob's sons traveled to Egypt to buy food during the famine when they encountered their bro brother, Joseph. Now, remember, Joseph was sold into slavery before this. That's why he was in Egypt. He was the second most powerful man in Egypt. And he was in charge of giving out food during the famine. His brothers came to him. And he knew who they were. Joseph imprisoned Simeon as a guarantee that Benjamin, their youngest brother, would be brought back to Joseph. Genesis chapter 42 and 43. Okay. Jacob's blessings. Jacob rebuked Levi and Simeon for their attack on Shechem. Genesis chapter 49 verses 5 through 7. Simeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. O my soul, come not thou into their secret, unto their assembly, my honor be thou not united. For in their anger they slew a man, and in their self will they dig down a wall. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I would divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Wow. Jacob's blessing. This is Jacob's rebuke of Levi and Simeon. Okay. Now, the symbol of Simeon is a gate, like a gate of Shechem. And a sword, kind of appropriate, huh? A Shechem, a, he's like a gate, he's like, the tribe is like a gate, like the gate of Shechem that they attacked, and a sword that they used to kill the men of Shechem. That's the symbol of Simeon. Now with the census for Simeon, the first census, it was 59,300 people. The second census was only 22,200 people. That's quite a drop from 59,300 to 22,200. Uh, That's uh, 37,100 people. Between the two senses, a span of 40 years, the size of the tribe significantly decreased. Now, it's, possi it's possible that they suffered more severely 
than the other tribes from the plagues, recorded in the book of Numbers. And you can see chapter 25, verses 1 through 9. And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods, and the people did eat and bowed down unto their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor, and the anger of Yahweh was kindled against Israel. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people, and hang them up before Yahweh against the sun that the fierce anger of Yahweh may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye every, every one of you his man that will join unto Baal Peor. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel, who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And when Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So the plague was saved from the children of Israel. And those that died in the plague were 24,000. Wow, that's a lot of people to die in the plague. So it's they, they might have suffered more severely. Okay? Moses, what was Moses' blessing for Simeon? Moses did not mention the tribe of Simeon in his blessings. That's an interesting thought there. For some reason, Moses did not mention him. Here is, again, the camp of the tabernacle. Of uh, the tabernacle. And... The tribe of Simeon is the bottom one in the middle. They were 59,300. They're right next to the tribe of Reuben. Was Simeon the breastplate of the high priest? The stone was, the stone was a lapis lazuli, or a sapphire. The color is a blue color, like in the picture on the bottom right there. It's a very bright blue color. And where is it on the breastplate? It's right to the left of the last one. Just like it was on the uh, tabernacle map. It's right to the left of it. It's right in the middle on the second row. Here is the map of uh, the Promised Land, enclaved of land in Judah, likely with the scattered settlements in Judah. This is Simeon's tribe. They, include, they included, Simeon's uh, tribe included Beersheba. And where is it on the map? It is right here in the bottom, a uh, little bit to the left. Simeon. Okay. So we see how much land Simeon had. He was uh, to the south and west of Moab. And how about in the Promised Land? Let's close with this. For Simeon, the tribe was also known for being uh, shepherds. They often migrated in search of pasture lands for their flocks. This might be have been uh, the fulfillment of Jacob's prophecy that Simeon would be scattered and dispersed. And you can look at that at a further uh, later time in First Chronicles chapter 4, verses 24 through 43. And that is going to end the teaching for this evening on the first two tribes of uh, the 12 tribes of Israel, Reuben and Simeon. Now next week we will pick up with Levi. We thank you very much for uh, listening to this or watching this message. Yahweh will bless. Yahweh's Learning Channel thanks you for watching this video. We hope you were edified by this content. Reach out to us with the information provided on screen or you may click on the links to view more of our videos. Please subscribe to be notified of new uploads. Until next time, Shalom.